morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. My name is PB Jelly Games, aka Garrett Zimmer. Now, most of you guys know me because I'm uploading this to my main channel as PB Jelly. I used to be a YouTuber, and you guys came to me to watch my Yummy Yummy World series and a number of other fun Let's Plays that I did with some crazy YouTubers out there. Friends of mine, I'll make mention Tomahawk and Nettie Plays, who I get to meet coming up. Just a, a quick heads up for any of you guys who are going to be in Ireland in the summer in July at the Mindvention convention, I will actually be there. I will be there hanging out on the educational side and hanging out, of course, with Tomahawk and Nettie and everybody else that's down there. So please, if you are going to be there, let me know. Send me a message in the comment section down below and I'd be happy to meet up with you guys. Uh, say hello from PB Jelly Games. I love it. Um, some of you are coming from the educational side. As many of you guys know, I've spent the last number of years working in the educational environment to really bring Minecraft and education into the classroom in a fun and authentic way. So I've been doing doing a lot of work with Microsoft and the Playcraft Learn team, the Minecraft Education Edition team. I'm now a Minecraft mentor, and I am very, very passionate about working with teachers around the world to help them bring Minecraft into the classroom in a very, very viable way. So at any rate, long story short, I'm here running a brand new series to deal with coding and modding in Minecraft. So I hope that this is going to be a nice mix, a nice bridge between Minecraft fun environment, which I'm still going to be having fun in here, and the Minecraft educational environment. So don't run away just yet. There's something for everybody in here. But the first thing I want to do is kind of explain what program I'm going to be using. First of all, you guys out there who are my old subs and you guys out there who are my new teacher fans, please do let me know what version of Minecraft you are using. Are you using the Java version? Are you using the Pocket Edition? How are you using it? And let me know if you are using it in your classrooms or if you'd like some information to kind of help you be able to get Minecraft and education into your classroom for those young students who don't yet get the opportunity to use it. So... I am going to be talking about Minecraft Education Edition. In Minecraft Education Edition, what Microsoft has done is transferred a number of different things. They've made it easier to use for teachers. They've made it expansive in terms of the number of blocks that they have. So they've done a lot of good work making it so that teachers can control the environment and that students can have fun without a lot of the PVP and uh, negative actions that come into it should a teacher want. Now, of course, I always support the idea that the game has to remain as authentic as possible to your experience. So if you're used to playing mini games, I also with my company MindGage am really working hard with teachers to try and help them incorporate fun, adventure, uh, uh, and excitement into their lessons. For Minecraft Education Edition, though, there are a couple of caveats. It is only run on the Windows 10 platform or the Mac OS updated software. So there's only two ways that you can get that. It doesn't work on Google Chromebooks and it doesn't work on Google machines um, or Android based machines. Minecraft Education Edition uh, as well very recently launched something that I'm going to be running this series around and that is called Code Builder. So you see it right here. I'm actually going to click so that it stays on here. Code Builder is an absolutely fantastic modding program. So essentially what it does for you kids is it allows you to mod the game of Minecraft similar to the types of mods that you guys are playing with today. Now resource packs don't work on it so you won't be able to change the look and feel of the different characters yet. I believe that that is coming soon. Don't quote me on that one, but I believe it is. Uh, so look forward to really good things. But what Code Builder does is it integrates with three different coding platforms. One is Tinker. And Tinker.com has a number of different platforms where you can code with robots, you can build apps, you can explore STEM. And how Tinker works is with these little block-based structures. It's very similar to Scratch. Let me see if I can pull up. No, I can't pull up a good picture. So we're going to move on to Make Code. Uh, and Microsoft's Make Code is the secondary uh, portion. Now, Microsoft Make Code is very specifically developed to integrate with the BBC Microbits, the Arduino Robots, and Microsoft's Minecraft. And it's really, really cool stuff. Scratch is probably the best and, and easiest example to explain because it's been around forever. MIT 
uh, a long time ago set up Scratch as a programming language for kids. And essentially, it functions as a standard programming language, whether it be a JavaScript or, or others. And all you have to do is move these blocks that are connected to pieces of code and you can create the code yourself. It's very intuitive, it's easy to pick up, and it's easy to use. So what I wanna do is, instead of showing you Scratch, Tinker, and Make Code just yet, I wanna show you what it looks like in the Minecraft world. And before we do that, for those of you educators who are out here looking to get this into your classroom, it is in beta mode right now, so please go on, join the beta, let Microsoft and the team at Playcraft Learn know if there's any bugs or issues that you want to see fixed or anything additional that you want to put in. But all you have to do to download it is go ahead and join the beta, and instead of going to Minecraft Education Edition, you're going to go down here to the Code Builder Beta and download it for Windows. Now, I've already gone ahead and downloaded that, so let me pull that back up there. Uh, I'll shrink the right screen because I'm running on a virtual desktop here. Um, and we want to find the Minecraft Education Edition Windows Beta zip file that just downloaded. So when you extract that, you get to see this Microsoft, or sorry, Minecraft Education Edition Beta Win 10, and it will show up there. Now, the first thing you want to do before you do anything is go in and run an install of Minecraft Education Edition. But before you do that, if you've had Minecraft Education Edition on your machine before, you want to do a fresh install. So you're going to want to click on this with your right mouse button, run as an administrator, and that will uninstall all Minecraft Education Edition versions. This is a very, very important point to, uh, to stop conflicts from happening within the programming. Then you're going to install Minecraft Education Edition. And once you have installed that, you have your licenses and everything in place, then you can go back here and install the code connection. So I've already gone ahead and done that. I've gone ahead and logged in. Keep in mind that with Minecraft Education Edition, you do need your school account to log in. It has to be an Office 365 account, which Office 365 accounts are actually free for students. So keep that in mind and you can uh, get your teachers to get you set up or help you get set up with that. Then we're going to go in here and we're going to click play. Now, I've already started this little, uh, little world, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to just delete that world because I want to start on a fresh, brand new world. And you'll notice when I go to create brand new world, it has a number of different templates that we can choose from. We can choose the start of town, the Mushroom Island, the tutorial, volume two, uh, and the template world blocks of grass. I have no idea what that is. I haven't tested it yet. But we're going to go into the agent trials, and we are set by default into survival, into peaceful. We're going to leave it as always day, a flat world, and we're going to click play. And then we're going to get a chance to see what's so cool about Minecraft Education Edition's Make Code program. So you'll see I'm in the world here. And if I look over to my left, I've got this Colton P. Agent. Well, you know what? I don't like his name. Not that I don't like his name. I'm sure Colton P. is a fantastic guy, but I want my own agent. So this little agent here, this guy that I just punched. I'm sorry, buddy. I, I didn't mean to punch you in the face. What he is, is he's my little helper. He's my little helper robot. Um, and this is so cool because he can do a number of amazing things for you. But in order to set this up, once you've installed the code builder, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just shrink my screen here just for a brief moment. There are two ways that you can set up the code platform. And what happens here is over here, you've got this code connection. So I can double click on that and launch Code Connection. And what this is, this is the interface between Minecraft and the coding platform. So let's just go ahead and show you how it looks. So I'm going to type in slash code. That is the second way that we can launch the Code Connection. So as I do that, you'll notice in the background something popped up. I didn't have to do anything. It is all automatic. And that's one of the things I love about Microsoft right now is they're making things so streamlined and so easy. Now we've got to choose an editor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's go to Tinker. Um, no, let's go to Scratch because I am somewhat familiar with Scratch. All extensions are experimental. Yes, I get that. Maybe it's going to ask me to connect to Scratch in a different way. I am not signed into Scratch. So let's just go ahead and go with Make Code. 
because I don't want to take the time from you guys. And MakeCode is a fantastic platform. It's actually Microsoft based. So we can go ahead and use that. And here you're going to notice this. And we've got a, a text box in, box in this area or a, a user box in this area where we can put all of our little code. And so this is basically block based coding where you have all these different options on the side that you can choose to actually run certain actions uh, based on what you do. And this is all coding. So coding is essentially telling a computer system step by step how to accomplish a certain goal. And so you'll notice here, I've got a series of steps. What I have set up immediately is on chat command go, my agent will move forward by two, my agent will move down by five, and then it will repeat this command four times. And on that command, I've got say, welcome to my first coding experience. But I want to go ahead and start from scratch. So I can just highlight those and press the delete button and get rid of them. So in the player actions, we have all these different things that we can do. We can teleport ourselves to a specific area. We can tell other people other things. We can execute a say command. We can use other types of commands as well. Our little agent commands though are over here. And if you'll notice, we have the ability to teleport the player or teleport the agent to me, to the player. We can make the agent move forward, left, right, up, down, center, back. We can do all of that. We can have an agent place something down, place from any slot, place on move. He can destroy obstacles, which is really, really cool. And we can turn that to true. And we can also use things that are very deeply used in programming called loops, logic, and variables. And the coolest thing is you can actually set up your own variable. So I can go in here and I can create a variable name called stuff. And stuff is pretty awesome. So if I go with stuff uh, and I say I want to use that as a variable, and I'll show you in future elements how this actually works. Um, then what's going to happen with that stuff as a variable, if I bring set here, so we can say set item to, you know, X, Y, Z. And now you'll see that we have stuff in here. And if I click on stuff and then I click rename that variable, I can also rename that stuff. So what I like about this is it's really, really cool for game design stuff. So we're going to go and say game. So we can create all these number of different variables, scores, points. If you want to track how your students are doing or how you are doing in the game that you create within this modded world of Minecraft, you can go ahead and do that using a number of different functions. Now that's going to be far more advanced than what we want to get to right now. For now, I just wanted to show you how this platform works, how it gets started. In the next episode, we are actually going to run through the trials. So now I have my agent, Garrett Z agent. Hello, buddy. How are you? And you know what? When I say hi to my agent, I want him to be very excited to see me. So I'm going to do one thing. When I say let's grab that one and let's grab on chat command. And I'm going to change this. Hello agent. I want to call him 007. Can I change my name to 007? <laughs> and when my agent moves like this, I want to make him go up and down just as if he's jumping. So he's going to go up by one. Let's go ahead and grab another one of these. But you know what? I want to do it in a different way. So just to show you the versatility here uh, and the ease of use here, if I just highlight that agent move up by one and I press control C, for copy and control plus V for paste, you'll notice that it automatically copies and pastes that. The other thing that I can do is copy and paste chunks of commands, chunks of code, which is very awesome. So what I want my agent to do is move up by one and then I want him to move right back down by one. And what he's going to do is start to basically dance. I wouldn't say dance, he's gonna bounce up and down. So let's go, hello, uh, agent unknown command okay so here we get into our first section of troubleshooting i bet you it's because we've got a space in there and it doesn't like to recognize the spaces so let's take that space out and try again so if i go oh you know what it was actually let's put that space back in there because i just saw my error i put a slash code 
in before the agent, a forward slash. And I shouldn't have done that because slash codes are reserved for very specific in-game codes or in-game commands. This should recognize when I say hello agent, and it did look at him bounce up and then bounce down. Now, you know what? He's not very excited right now, so I want to go ahead and make him even more excited. And I want to do that by let's take this and we'll copy and paste. But is this the most efficient way to copy and paste and copy and paste? There is a better way. So if I go down here and go to loop, I have the option to choose a repeat function. And that repeat function is really, really cool. So if I place that repeat function there, it will repeat everything that's in this little block of code. Now you'll notice all the intelligent ones, and I know you guys got this out there, that I have placed this in the wrong spot. Well, not necessarily in the wrong spot, but what's going on is it has nothing inside the code. So here's how you read it. It will repeat four times doing everything that's in here and this little arrow says move on to the next command all right or the next section of that code so what i want to do is i want to take these pieces here and i want to bring them right inside that little bubble and you'll notice it starts to expand as i do that and let me go control c and control v control c and control v and that's going to grow and grow and grow and shrink and shrink as I do things. So I'm going to get rid of these and we're going to run our command one more time. Hello, agent. Oh, look at him bounce. Oh, you're so excited for me. Well, that's the introduction that I have for you guys for Code Builder. We're going to get into everything in the next... Uh, it, section the next video i should say and in the next video we're going to go through what microsoft has set up which is these agent trials now let me just show you this real quick i'm going to go into game mode c just so that i can fly and there's a number of different trials that'll get you familiar with how your code agent will work how he will move, how he will step on certain plates, and how he will do certain things. Um, key thing, you'll notice some lava over here. Don't worry about the lava. Your agent can actually go through the lava, which is pretty crazy. Um, and so we'll get a chance to go through all of this over the next number of videos uh, and lessons. From there, once we get through the tutorial, my plan is to actually get into some of the deeper elements of coding. Because I train teachers on a regular basis on how to create game-based learning scenarios and make lessons truly fun and engaging for their students, we're going to get into the details and the basics of game design using the coding platform uh, in Minecraft. And that way you as educators and you as students can go and enjoy and learn to actually create games yourself. For now, I hope you guys have enjoyed this little quick intro into Minecraft Make Code, um, Minecraft Education Edition Make Code, I should say, or Code Builder. My name is Garrett Zimmer, aka PB Jelly Games, and I am saying peanut butter jelly out pieces, oh Reese's, and I'll catch you in the next video.